This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. Civic Media News. I'm Carrie Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Today is partisan primary election day, the first election day since new boundaries for Wisconsin Senate and Assembly districts went into effect. Wisconsin Elections Commission Administrator Megan Wolf. Who's on their ballot, what districts they're qualified to vote in depends on their address. And so when the redistricting happened, voters who are now in a new district, their registration was moved by their clerk into that appropriate district. Polls are open till 8 tonight. That's when election night coverage begins on many civic media radio stations and online. The last of four hotel security guards linked to the death of Devante Mitchell in Milwaukee has made his initial court appearance. Herbert Williamson and three others restrained Mitchell on June 30th. Mitchell died of asphyxiation. Staffing levels at Wisconsin's youth prisons is on the agenda as Governor Evers' Juvenile Justice Commission meets today. Lincoln Hills and Copper Lake schools are under more scrutiny since a teenager attacked and killed a counselor in June. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is paying more than $2 billion to minority farmers, ranchers, and foresters. It's to make up for discriminatory practices of the past, like denying government loans. But some advocates say they want more transparency. I'm not personally dazzled about numbers or dollar amounts unless I can connect that to the people that are being most impacted. Sharon Mallory is with the 2020 Farmers Co-op. Attendance at this year's Wisconsin State Fair set a record. The State Fair Board says 1.1 million people came through the gates in West Dallas. That's about 6,500 more people than last year. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now, here's what you need to know closer to home. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. A Rice Lake wood manufacturing plant closed earlier this month, apparently providing only one day of notice for employees before they were let go. According to a WEAU report, Bessie Forest Products filed the notice that they were planning to close on August 1st and terminated all 46 of their employees on August 2nd. In a statement, company officials said they were sorry they couldn't provide more notice to their employees, citing failed restructuring alternatives as the reason that they were closing with such short notice. The Dunn County Health Department has a new vending machine to distribute harm reduction materials to community members for free. The kiosk features items like Narcan, gun locks, and hygiene kits wrapped in gray bags with color-coded stickers on them to identify what each item is, allowing people to use the vending machine to get what they need without the fear of judgment from people passing by. The harm reduction vending machine can be found near the entrance in the basement of the government building. Chippewa Valley residents will be able to get a slow-moving vehicle sign for free at Farm Technology Days this week. According to a press release from Chippewa County Emergency Management, the slow-moving vehicle signs are being distributed for free to farmers and residents at the event through Thursday, after which they will be available at the Chippewa County Sheriff's Office until there are none left. Officials are also reminding residents to slow down and pass with care when they see a vehicle with the sign on the roads. Eau Claire area commuters should expect some delays this week near the I-94 and Highway 53 interchange. According to a WQOW report, the loop ramps at the interchange will close to traffic starting at 7 a.m. on Thursday, with the closures expected to last about one month. Transportation officials say the closures are part of an improvement project on I-94 from west of the interchange to Mallard Road in the town of Clear Creek. While the closures are in effect, detour routes will be set up to help drivers navigate the change. Preparations are underway for Chippewa County to host Wisconsin Farm Technology Days. According to a WQOW report, there are over 500 volunteers helping to set up the Chippewa Valley Music Festival grounds near Kadat ahead of the massive farming event. Wisconsin Farm Technology Days will be held from Tuesday to Thursday this week. It offers farmers from across the region the chance to show off the latest farming equipment and make connections with other farmers. There will also be a massive trade show. The Eau Claire City County Health Department has received funding to help rural residents get better access to proper nutrition. According to a WQOW report, the health department received a nearly $50,000 grant from the Medical College of Wisconsin's Advancing a Healthier Wisconsin Endowment for the study. The focus of the department's efforts will be on the Augusta, Fall Creek, and Fairchild areas. The first step of the study will be a survey for rural residents, followed by feedback sessions with community members. 
The Chippewa Valley Regional Airport has a new safety vehicle. According to a press release, airport officials say they now have a 2024 Oshkosh Stryker aircraft rescue and firefighting vehicle. The addition of the safety vehicle will assist the airport in meeting Federal Aviation Administration requirements. The aircraft rescue and firefighting vehicle will also be equipped with a new kind of firefighting foam that was only recently approved for use on aircraft fires. It will allow officials to respond even faster in the event of a crash. Tuesday is primary election day in Wisconsin, and the western portion of the state will feature a competitive Democratic primary. Tuesday's third congressional district primary will feature Katrina Shankland, Rebecca Cook, and Eric Wilson on the ballot, each looking to secure enough support to take on Congressman Derek Van Orden in the general election this November. Tuesday's ballot will also feature two controversial proposed constitutional amendments regarding the governor's power to distribute federal funding. And that's what you need to know. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The crew lose to L.A. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers lost game one of their four-game series to the Dodgers last night. The final 5-2, to two, game two tonight. Manager Pat Murphy said he thought his young Brewers team was a little intimidated facing the Dodgers and future Hall of Famer now in his 17th season, Clayton Kershaw on the mound. Yeah, this is it, man. If, if you want to be, you want to you swim with the Sharks, you got to be willing to step up in these situations and put together, forget about who's on the mound. I mean, and forget about, you know, it's baseball. It's pitch by pitch. And I'm not disappointed in any, I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad at anybody or anything like that. I'm just, I just felt like we didn't have the right approach there uh, mentally for a situation. But it is, they're young guys in front of their hometown crowd and, and it's Kershaw. So that means something. NFL, one of the players who stood out in the Packers' win over the Browns was wide receiver Grant DuBose, who had five catches for 66 yards, leading the team in receptions. Grant had a really good game the other day. Obviously, he made some pretty clutch catches, um, but his effort blocking uh, was excellent as well. So I was really pleased with that, with him. He had a really good game. That's Packers offensive coordinator Adam Stenovich. The team heads to Denver for a joint practice session later this week. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. If you're looking for a movie this weekend that is ripe for theater viewing as opposed to streaming and you can't seem to get enough of franchises, check out Alien Romulus. Not even sure I need to explain what it's about, but the story finds colonizers in space who end up in peril when they come face to face with, you guessed it, aliens. Alien Romulus is the umpteenth installment in the series and most likely not the last, and it opens August 16th. Have fun at the movies. Matt Damon says the people and culture of Boston can seem abrasive and harsh. Damon's new comedy is called The Instigators and is set in the actor's native city. His lifelong pal and castmate Casey Affleck also calls Boston his hometown. Damon says he is aware of how people view Boston and can be put off by Bostonians' sarcasm and cynicism. But to him, it feels like a comfortable pair of socks. New tourism slogan, anyone? The Instigators can be streamed on Apple TV. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Mostly sunny today. We'll get to around 82 for a high this afternoon. The wind out of the southwest at 5 to 15. Tonight, partly cloudy, 59. Tomorrow, some sunshine in the morning. Mostly cloudy in the afternoon, 82 with scattered thunderstorms by tomorrow night. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Currently, it is 66. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at wcfw.fm or thetap.fm.